everyone how good is this bed seriously <laughs> I'm so proud of this bed and so happy with the way it turned out um, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to say the same for the next job that I'm doing in the bus I'm talking about building walls and trying to build square walls in a curved bus is a nightmare this could very well turn out to be a not so much a how-to video but a how not to video So there are actually six walls that I need to put in in this area of the bus uh, which sounds like a lot but some of them are going to be like sides of cupboards and things. Um, so there's these two main walls that I already have kind of in position here and they're the walls that are going to be on either side of my fridge. So my fridge is going to fit in this space and then I'm going to have two walls in line with those on the other side which won't come out as far. They'll probably only come out to about uh, where the wheel arch is here and this one here in fact will even be a little bit further in so there'll only be little short walls but they'll line up with these two and then in front of this on each side there'll be a cupboard running floor to ceiling um, and it'll only be about 250 wide so you can see where I've got the edge of my plywood here is where there'll be another wall so I need to put walls here and here and then I need another two walls that will line up with these two and I want to get all of those walls in position and secured so that I know that they all line up and then I'll have those to work off when I'm building my cabinets in front of them um, and bathroom behind and so on. Now by far the biggest challenge I have with this bus is getting things square because it's obviously not a nice straight square box to begin with and really in this bus the only thing that is even remotely close to being straight is the floor. Um, because the walls are not straight, the ceiling is, is curved, um, and even front to back it's not totally square or straight. So it is almost impossible to find a straight line in the bus to start with that you can then square off things against. So that is the biggest challenge. But because the floor is pretty well straight um, then I'm using that as a starting point for most of my things. You can see I've already kind of made a piece that's a half a wall so I've got a bottom plate and this um, upright here so I've basically got like an L shaped part of the wall so the two pieces of timber are secured together and I know when I join those that that is definitely um, a right angle so I know that this piece here is at right angles and is square and so then I'm able to put it in the position that I want and check that it's square off the floor. Now that I've got them in position, I've actually marked, just with pencil, I've actually drawn a line on my floor around where the bottom plate is sitting so that I'll be able to position that exactly in, in the right spot when I come to screw it in. And I've also drawn a line here on the ceiling. So I've marked exactly where the upright meets the ceiling here and I've also it's, you can't really tell but I've drawn a line along here as well because what I'm planning to do is to actually put a top plate sort of from in line with where this little wall here needs to be all the way along to the end of the bus and then I'll be able to attach my three walls up into that and I'll know that they're straight so I need to know the position where this top plate's going so I've marked a line here and I've done the same on this side and then uh, I'll be able to join those lines so I'll have a mark where the top plate is going and then because I've marked these lines here I'll know when I come to put this in that that's where this upright needs to sit. I'm obviously going to check it again with the square on the floor to make sure it's right but at least this will give me an idea of where it needs to start and I've done the same thing uh, over here. And I know how far out this top plate here needs to come because where this wall is going is almost exactly in line with where the metal beam is on the roof. So you remember there were big curved metal beams going across the roof and I put timber battens um, alongside each of those to screw the ceiling boards up into. So that's where these screws are. They're actually screwed into the timber batten that I have alongside the metal beam which is about in here. And so I, in this area here, I actually put another timber batten on this side so that I could screw the top plate into that because I didn't want to screw the top plate through, you know, all my vapor barrier and everything into the metal beam. 
and I know exactly where that is because I measured it before I covered the ceiling and I left myself a little note here so I know that this top plate that I'm doing for all my wall studs needs to come 65 millimeters past here so I've actually measured it here I don't know if you can see there's a little mark here so this top plate that I'm going to be putting in for these walls needs to come out to in line with this okay so I've got these four basic uh, bottom plates and studs sitting where I want them um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and secure these ones in because I can they're a lot easier to get nice and straight and square once I've got these fixed in the right position I'll be able to fix these two in and make sure they're nicely aligned. Now, fingers crossed if, if that button is actually up there where I think it is. We're about to find out. Okay, well, it went into something nice and securely, so, so far so good. So you might be wondering why I'm putting a top plate under the studs on this side but I'm not doing that on this side and there's a reason for that and that is it has to do with what's actually behind this ceiling if you've seen all my previous videos you'll, you might remember when I before I put up any of this insulation or the ceiling lining I actually ran some timber battens along the length of the roof and I actually ran one along here just before like the main part of the curve started so where I'm putting the wall on this side there's actually already a kind of a top plate here it's it's screwed into the metal frame of the bus you just can't see it because it's got the insulation now covering it but it is actually running just along there so I've already got something really secure that I can screw the studs into on this side the problem I have on this side is that this wall is a lot further out towards the center of the bus so I do actually have another timber batten running along here on this side but there isn't one running this way underneath where these studs are going they don't they don't line up with any of those timber battens running this way so if I if I didn't put this top plate here the only thing that I'd have to screw these studs into is just the boards that I've used on the ceiling and they're only about 11 millimeters thick so it's just I just wanted something with a little bit of extra meat to be able to screw these walls in particularly this one because these walls have to are surrounding my fridge and I want them to be super sturdy because I'm putting a massive fridge in this bus and the last thing I want is to have flimsy walls that are not going to support the fridge so I want something that's a little bit thicker than just the ceiling boards alone to screw into and the reason I'm running the top plate the whole length um, is because I can screw this top plate into the timber battens that I've got running this way so I'll be able to screw it in here here and also here so it'll be really secure and then my screws that I'll screw the studs in with can go through these this top plate and also into the ceiling boards if they need to and it just gives it a little bit more meat to secure this bottom plate into the floor I'm actually using self-drilling metal screws because underneath the floor here right up against this wheel arch is not a lot of timber in fact there is only underneath this uh, vinyl here there's only six millimeters of, of ply before you hit the metal uh, floor that was going around the wheel arch so I can't use timber screws because there's really no timber underneath this to screw into so I'm actually with these with these ones here that are right up against the wheel arch I'm gonna have to use metal screws and actually go through the metal subfloor And for this one that's quite a bit further back there is 18 mil ply under the floor here so I can just use ordinary timber screws and it'll screw down into that so 
So now that I've got those, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put these other corner ones in on this side and use these to get them hopefully lined up. If you're wondering why this bottom plate is twice as thick as the others, it's because I messed up when I was cutting this upright, I cut it way too short. Um, so, and I didn't have any more of this size timber that was long enough. So I ended up just like raising the bottom plate to account for my mistake. I measured it twice too. I just measured the wrong bloody thing. I thought that by starting with two pieces of timber joined at a right angle and using this as a guide to get my wall square to the floor that things would progress fairly easily but in fact the opposite was true. This is the challenge in this bus is trying to get things square because according to the floor around this upright this upright is square and when I measure the distance between these two it's the same all the way down which should mean that this upright is parallel to this one which should mean that it's square to the floor but it's not <laughs> which which means that this part of the floor is maybe not level and so my square is not really sitting right or this part of the floor was not quite right and this one isn't actually square and here's a classic example of what I'm dealing with when I measure this upright with the square on the floor it's clearly quite a way out it's nowhere near square and yet if I put my square on the other side of this same upright it looks perfectly square like what do you do with that there was a lot of frustration and a lot of swearing on that first day. I spent hours trying to figure out how to do these walls. I mean, I've not seen anyone else have this much trouble getting their walls square. Is there some trick that they know that I don't or do they just not care as much? It looks straight when I'm standing here. Which is a highly accurate way of measuring whether something's square. So it looks straight. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Don't move. So it's been a couple of days since I put these studs in. I had to work yesterday, so I couldn't get much done on the bus. Um, but I'm back to start afresh again today. And what I'm going to do next is just put a few extra studs and noggins in these walls to make them more secure and to secure them into the side walls of the bus. So on each side, I've got a batten running at this height. I've got one under the windows and I've got one along the floor that I can... Uh, secure the walls too and on this side I've also got this one here that I'll probably put another stud up to as well. Hopefully this will be easier. We'll see. So things started off pretty well but then I ran into trouble trying to screw in the first lot of noggins when I realized that the space was just too small to be able to get my drill into. <laughs> I just remembered I have this groovy little piece of equipment. I would, this is a right angle drill attachment and I was gifted this ages ago and I've never used it. But it's, it's perfectly designed for exactly this kind of situation where you've got too tight a space to actually get your drill around to be able to drill. Um, and the idea is that it's got an attachment on here that it just attaches to your drill like an ordinary drill bit and then the actual drill bit that you're going to use to screw in the screw goes up here and you'll see when I pull the trigger on the drill it'll turn this this will not move but it'll actually turn uh, this drill bit here so hopefully you'll be able to see this so 
so yeah I'm thinking I can possibly use this to get the pocket hole screw in we'll give it a crack it's still gonna be a bit awkward because it's still very tight even for this It's going in. It's just really awkward. I can't get a really good grip on the screw head yet. I'm just. I think that's in. Well, there you go <laughs> how cool is that so if you ever find yourself in a situation like that where the space is too tight to get the drill in try one of these babies it's not easy to use it's still a bit awkward but it worked and it did the job so with that little bit of success I pressed on but I soon ran into problems again because no matter how hard I tried I just didn't seem to be able to get things lined up properly And it turned out to be another frustrating day. Okay, this is day three of trying to get these walls in. I'm hoping today will go a lot more smoothly. Yesterday I decided to actually move the walls that I'd already put in place um, because it just became clear that these two uprights here that I put in first were really not straight even though it was like looks as though it was straight and square on the floor when you stood at the end of the bus and, and looked down they really didn't look straight um, and in fact when I came to put this stud in um, you know it just became clear that they weren't square so what I ended up doing was I moved this whole top plate over this way about 15 or 20 millimeters and I moved the bottom of these ones in this way the same distance so um, these ones now actually do look straight and it's square on the bottom plate here it matches up nicely with this stud this distance here is equal um, at both ends uh, for both of these sets of walls um, this distance across here is equal this distance across here is equal they look straight I'm happy with where they are now and today I am going to put more studs and noggins in here and get these walls finished well I didn't get the walls finished on day three because like everything else in the bus things take a lot longer than you think they're going to do but I did finally start to make some good progress now that I had the main corner studs looking like they were actually straight and square it was a lot easier to get everything else lined up Okay, so finally I finished these two walls here, which are the walls that will be on either side of my fridge. And they are super strong. Like if I try to move these walls, it actually rocks the whole bus. So I'm pretty happy with those. The reason I did the studs and then the noggins the way that I did was that above the height of my kitchen cabinet, which is going here, um, this part of the wall will actually be visible and I want to clad that with tongue and groove boards so I needed a good surface area with the studs to screw those boards into which is why I've done um, this the way that I have so yeah I'm really happy with that I still obviously need to put this little wall here for the other side of the cabinet that's going here and that will line up with this wall so I still need to do these two walls um, but before I do that I want to finish off these two walls which are opposite the fridge now I'm going to be doing this a little bit differently uh, partly because I have part of the wheel arch in the way 
here so I can't just do a normal stud on this side like I have over here I've got to raise it up a little bit but also this is where my electrical bay will be so I'm gonna have some fairly heavy batteries sitting down here and then above that I'm going to have a big inverter uh, and my breaker box and everything screwed onto the wall at the back of this cabinet so I'm actually wanting to put um, instead of just having this 3mm ply that I've got at the back of the cabinet holding the insulation in I'm actually going to be putting another back on this cabinet that's actually going to be made from form board so it's going to be fairly very strong and sturdy and then that will be enough to screw in um, the brackets and things that will hold up my inverter and breaker box because they're quite heavy so I'm going to be doing this cabinet a little bit differently what I'm going to do first and you can see here I've cut away some of the insulation that I put over the wheel arch here um, because I'm actually going to be utilizing these brackets that are welded onto the side of the wheel arch and if you can see here there's already a couple of holes this one's threaded this one isn't and my plan is I'm going to see if I can drill out this hole make it a little bit bigger because what I want to do is bolt uh, some pieces of timber down through that onto that so they'll be super secure and then I'll be able to use that as a kind of a bottom plate for a shelf that I want to put along here that will my batteries will sit on and then once I've built this shelf um, that will essentially be a second floor and I'll then be able to put the rest of my studs and things up from that so I've decided to try drilling out this hole instead of this one even though this is threaded and there's a kind of washer welded on underneath so it might be a bit trickier to drill but this one's just a bit too close to the wall of the wheel arch and I think it's going to be too hard to try and get a nut um, under there to screw onto the bolt so I'm going to go with this hole here um, and I've actually got these bolts um, already which are M8 bolts they're obviously too long but what I'm thinking is I'll be able to um, they're long enough to get through the timber and um, and this no problem so what I'll do is I'll just cut them off to um, the right length to make them a bit shorter and I should be able to use them for these <laughs> Okay, so that actually drilled out much easier than I was expecting. So now I've got my two holes. I just need to um, get some holes in the timber and make sure they line up. So if I just mark on here where these holes are. Okay, well this one goes in okay, but I did a really shitty job of keeping this one in the middle and straight and it's just not quite lining up um, with the hole. It's it's needs to come this way a couple of mil. Um, so what I'm going to do is just try filing out the hole, making it a bit bigger and then hopefully I'll be able to get this in. <laughs> Ha! All right, now we're cooking. So now I just work, need to work out what length to cut them off and then thread them on and it should be all good. The trick with cutting bolts is to make sure that before you start cutting, you actually have the nut threaded on. And that way, once you've cut the bolt, as you unthread the nut, it actually helps to clean up the thread and makes it a lot easier to get the nut back on again. And another trick is to use a hacksaw to cut the bolt rather than bolt cutters. Bolt cutters can actually kind of squash the thread of the bolt as they're cutting and make it impossible to get the nut on or off again, whereas a hacksaw gives you a much cleaner cut and is less likely to damage the thread.
Beautiful. That is not going anywhere. Okay, pretty happy with that. So now I've got that uh, shelf there that my batteries can sit on and now I can also use this over here um, to get another bottom plate for this stud that's on this side for this wall. Um, and if you're wondering why I extended the rails out to here, um, it's because this is where I need to put the bottom plate for the wall that's going here. Um, and because of the where the wheel arch was in the way it was just a bit tricky so now I can actually screw my bottom plate into these rails and put my studs up from there. By the fourth day I really felt like I was on a roll with these walls and I was making really good progress. I would have actually finished it on this day except I ran out of timber and had to wait until I could get into town to get some more from the hardware shop. Well, I have finally finished framing out these walls. It has taken me almost a week. <laughs> it was probably the most frustrating job on the whole bus so far. I mean, I know the camera angle makes them look as if they're kind of leaning out this way at the top, but they're definitely parallel. I don't know if they're 100% square because I don't have anything 100% square to measure off, but they look nice and straight when you stand at the end of the bus and you know all the distances between them are the same so when I come to fit doors and things hopefully it won't be too much of a problem as far as I'm concerned it's good enough so on this side here I've got what's going to be my wardrobe essentially so I'll have hanging space at the top and probably enough room for a shelf or two underneath that uh, this is my fridge space and then opposite my fridge you saw this is going to be my electrical bay and then here opposite the wardrobe is going to be a pantry cupboard so obviously I still need to do cladding and put interior shelves and things in there but I just wanted to get the framing done because that now gives me some points to work off when I'm building out my kitchen cabinets from there. So now that this is done the next job is to start framing out the kitchen cabinets which are going to go just here. So I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully that will be a little bit easier. Who knows? Stay tuned. <laughs> 